All right, so a number of you that saw my video last week on the i6X with uh, OpenTX and ExpressLRS on there. Uh, if you're wondering about that video from last week, I'll link that in the description down below. But if you saw that and you requested to see the firmware uh, update for the regular i6, this is that video. And you can see here, it's got a modified version of the ExpressLRS V2 Lua script on here already as part of the firmware and you can control the external module. I've got one in here. I'll show you how I have it all set up here shortly, but I want to first uh, give a standard disclaimer here that if you don't know how to flash stuff, um, comfortable with um, installing software on your computer, USB drivers, um, all the kind of technical PC stuff. This video is not for you. Um, and we also, you have to be aware that it is possible you may make, may make a mistake in the process and brick your radio. In fact, I made a mistake and killed uh, one of these. I, <laughs> um, I think I, um, I'm not exactly, I'm not 100% sure what mistake I made. I made a mistake somewhere and when I, after I flashed it, the radio did not turn on again. It was just bricked. So, and I'm pretty comfortable in, with flashing all kinds of firmware and stuff. I have to go back and figure out if I can unbrick it or not. But um, uh, yeah, it, it, if, uh, if I followed all the steps as I thought I did in the instructions and I still bricked it, it means a pretty good chance that you'll probably do the same. The second time worked on a second radio and you can see it's working and I tested it. I was able to fly. Uh, one of my uh, Meteor 65 Express LRS in the house, no problem, it's working great. But I just want to make sure that you guys understand that, you know, yeah, it's a cheap radio, but it could be in the trash very shortly here if you make a mistake somewhere inadvertently. Now, I'm not going to go into super in-depth and hold your hand on every little step here uh, in this tutorial because I just follow the steps that were in the instruction guide on the... Uh, GitHub page. So there's a GitHub page with the source code and a readme file and about halfway down there there's a link to a PDF file that has all the instructions on where to get the uh, programmer, the um, uh, the programmer or the firmware updater program, also all the step-by-step -step instructions on how to uh, put the settings in to make sure the programmer has all the right settings and then also show you how to connect it up to your radio to do the flashing. So I just follow those steps pretty much to the letter. Um, I'll show you here with what I did. And it's, it's basically a replay of what you're going to see in that PDF guide. I did not deviate from that guide in any way. Now this project is a fork of another project by, an, by another guy named Cotello. I think this one here is made by a guy, uh, well, it's called A Error 2 or something like that. And this is called the ER Fly 6 firmware. So there's, I think, several different forks. I think. This is the one that I use, and that, that's what I'm going to link in the description. If you go to the RC groups, there's probably some other forks and other ways you can get variations of this firmware. I'm not covering that in this video. Also, um, the firmware for this radio is totally different from the i6X. So if you have an i6X, you go to the other video that I link, I'll link in the video description, follow those instructions, completely different from this one, so don't mix them up, they're different radios. So they have similar names, different radios. A lot of people have also have asked, can this work on the i6S, which is you know a slight different variation in the name, but it's a completely different radio. Neither one of these firmwares will work with that radio or any other FlySky radio. So I wanted to get that question out of the way as well because a lot of people were like, well, will it work with this FlySky radio, that FlySky radio? Only will work with this specific model and that's the only one. So like I said, I, I went to uh, the GitHub page, I downloaded the PDF file for the instructions. And then once I uh, got the PDF file, I opened it up and then the second link is to a Google Drive uh, folder that has a the executable fo uh, file for the... Um, basically the firmware flasher program. So you're gonna need that specific one. There might be other ones out there that you can get, but that, that's the one that I use. So if um, you're, uh, you're gonna be using something else, you're gonna probably have some issues. So I used that one, I downloaded it, I installed it, 
and uh, I use the JLink uh, Flasher program. There's other programs that get installed with that installer. Don't use any of the other ones. Only use the one that they indicated in the manual or the instruction guide. And then you have to make sure you have the correct settings. Put those in. And then you want to go and get the correct firmware file. So you can get all the source code and everything and download that from the um, GitHub page. But go to the releases section, click on that section, or click on that link. Go to the releases page and get the latest release, which is 1.06, which has all the latest bug fixes. And then download the fsi6.hex file. And that's the file that you're going to uh, upload to the radio and flash with. All right, so quickly a note about this programmer. I got this off of Amazon. The, you can also get these off of AliExpress. There seems to be a lot of different variations of this programmer. And I've heard that some work and some don't work. I wasn't sure if this was gonna work. So I just went, I took a leap of faith and I bought it off Amazon. This one did work. Um, there's a lot of other ones that kind of look similar to this one that are on AliExpress. I wasn't really sure which one was the right one because some of them look like the ones in the photo in the manual and some of them are, had slightly different variations. So again, this is, um, yeah, this is something that uh, I'm not 100% sure what your, res what your results and experience are gonna be like based on the programming you get. I was lucky and I got one that worked and that's the one I'm gonna link in the description. I'll link, you know, um, the AliExpress link as well, but I have no idea what you're going to get there. It might work, it might not work, so just be aware of that. And it also, uh, I'll be aware, this programmer does cost about 10 bucks on Amazon. It's about $78 on AliExpress, which is unfortunate because this is a really cheap radio, and the programming cable that comes with the radio does not flash, as far as I know, with these uh, programs that we have. So in the back of the programmer here, there's a plug, and then there's listing of what the uh, different pins do, so it's ground, 3.3 volts, input, output, and clock. And it comes with this uh, connector here, and it, it should match up with uh, the color, so power is red and black is ground, etc. But now the yellow and the white, which is I-O and clock, is backwards. On this plug here, when you plug it into the radio, and I'll show you that when you open it up, so I used um, these little uh, extension adapters. I forget what these are called to basically I can swap the yellow and the white wires when I plug them into the board. Because if you plug in this cable directly into the board, it does not do anything because the I.O. and the clock are reversed. Now you could take these pins out and swap these and then it'll work when you plug it into the radio. But this is what I did. I had to figure it out. Also, I noticed that some of the uh, listings for this program are come with the, this type of like con uh, connector at the end where it's like loose and you can uh, adjust the, or plug in the uh, plugs in any order you want. And some of them come like this and some of them come with other types of plugs and pinouts. So you gotta be aware of what you're gonna get and you, have to, you may need to make some adapt adaptations. All right, so on my radio, again, four screws to get in, take those out and then you can pop them back off. Now the four pins on the main board that you want to plug into are right here. They're actually conveniently already on the board like that. And you can see the 3.3 volts at the bottom one. The second the bottom one is the clock. Third to the bottom is the I.O. And then the fourth one is ground. So it's nicely labeled. So you just have to make sure that you have the wires on the programmer that are, are going to the connection on this main board. Just match up and you're good to go. Now when you power on the programmer via your USB on your computer, it'll power on the main board here. But because the voltage is gonna be 3.3 volts, your radio will start going crazy because it'll be like a low voltage warning. So just make sure you have your batteries in here and have this turned on when you, um, already turned on when you plug it into your computer so you don't have the radio beeping at you constantly while you're trying to program it. That's what I did, it seemed to be fine. Okay, so once you've got the programmer connected to the radio correctly and the programmer connected to your computer correctly, and you've launched up the J-Link flashing program, I also loaded up the um, hex file that you've downloaded. You should be able to go up to the top menu there and program the radio, and you'll see at the bottom a progress bar. 
of showing it's, it's being flashed. And at that point, um, it'll go away then. You should have no errors. It'll say uh, flashing successful. If you have an error there, you're probably going to have to go to um, the RC groups to ask over there because I never got any errors when I bricked mine. So I'm not really sure how to even resolve that. And if there's other errors, I'm pretty clueless as to how to resolve those as well. So probably, yeah, we're going to have to go over there and ask if you have any errors. But I, for me, I, I, I'm assuming that, you know, if you get an error, you probably didn't connect up something correctly and you probably should recheck that. But assuming you do, you're, you should be successful. And at that point, you just shut off the radio, just power everything down, disconnect everything, and you'll have the um, the new firmware installed on the radio. And the next thing you power it up, you'll get a like a EEPROM data error. Just hit any key to bypass that. It'll format, basically it'll format the, the uh, flash memory inside the radio with the new firmware. And uh, I don't know if this is OpenTX or not. I don't, I think it's like some version of ER9, X or something like that from like years ago, along with some of the code from the OpenTX version from the i6X ported over, as well as the uh, ExpressLRS Lewis script ported over. So yeah, all these developers, they did all this work to port over that, you know, sort of combine that old code with the new code to work with this particular radio. So in the manual, it lists like this um, port here in the back for connecting up your ExpressLRS module basically for your ground, um, also for the signal. It doesn't cover the power aspect of it. And uh, for me, I did the same setup here that I did with the i6X. I actually tapped into the VBAT for the batteries here because I'm using the same uh, lithium ion batteries in here. Uh, I'm not gonna cover how to power this up because that's a completely separate topic. Uh, there's also a lot of power mods for this already. Lots of videos on how to properly power this up if you wanna use a lithium uh, like a like a like a lipo battery, for example. What I would recommend, what's easiest, just use like um, either like a lithium ion battery like this, or like a nickel metal hydride battery like this. And then on your module, so on your module, just power it up off of the uh, external power there, and you shouldn't have any issues. You should have pretty good battery life because the the module won't be sucking down the battery on the transmitter. Anyway, got this little servo connector here, and actually this time instead of fishing it through the PPM port. I fish it through a little hole here uh, where the batteries come out or in the battery bay and then it's going to the other side here. All right, so the three wires are coming out over here. So I have the yellow signal. This blue wire is actually power and then the black wire there is ground. And there are some spots here on the motherboard that I found out correspond to the uh, pinouts in the back here. So you have to use uh, this port right here for signal. And I think that's PPM out on this radio, but they repurposed that for the uh, crosswire signal. And so instead of using that, I uh, solder to the board here so that blue wire right there is the power. And that is on basically battery plus. So it's basically VBAT. The yellow wire there, right there is um, PPM in, and that's the signal. And then the ground is on the other side over here in the corner. And that is the, just a, a BVAT or negative or the ground pad right there. So those are the three that I used to uh, connect up that little uh, servo connector so I can connect up other modules on the outside like I did with the, um, i6x and of course you can mount here any way you want in the back with just the uh, three pin server connector and everything should work like before also uh, do note that i i cut off the corner of this battery cover here so that the wires don't get pinched when i actually close this the battery compartment up and it's totally fine like this Okay, so that's going to do it for this video. Yeah, you know, um, as I said earlier, just follow the instructions in the PDF guide for flashing. And then if you want to take the additional steps that I took here for, uh, you know, the, uh, the servo connector connecting directly to the motherboard, that's optional. You can obviously use the PPM port in the back if you, if you just want to, you know, uh, not have to do all the soldering that I did. Um, but yeah, it's kind of your choice and there's lots of different ways you can do the power setup on this one So yeah, if you are totally lost, let me know uh, and maybe give you some suggestions on how to power this But as I said, the easiest and most simple way is going to be to use regular batteries 
you know, double A's for transmitter power and then power up the, ex ex the Express LRS module separately using like a separate LiPo battery. I think that would be the easiest and quickest way to do it. All right, that's gonna do it for this one. I'll talk to you guys in the next video.